In the last episode, we seen how to create an STL of a topographical map. In this episode, we're going to print it. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're back here at the Alpha Wise. We're printing out the topographical map we created in the last episode. And I wanted to share a few things about this with you guys. And also wanted you to kind of see how it's coming together. So as you recall, in the first video, when I created the STL from the map, uh, I didn't use any base. And you can kind of see how the, the thickness here, and I'll go, when we get it off of here and go to the bench, I'll talk a little bit more about it, and we'll put the calibers on it. But one of the things you can kind of see, the way it's really forming up, and the way that the infill structure is kind of coming up to meet some of the topographical features. Now, I only used a 10% infill, so I went very light, so there is a little bit of stringing, but the, um, you know, it's no big deal because, again, because of the accentuation that we used in the 3X modifier, I don't think it's going to be a big deal, and from what's been completed, it doesn't appear to be a big deal at all. Now, one of the pieces that I really am finding kind of cool is already the river here. Uh, is coming out very nice and, and many of the features are coming out really well. Now I'm printing this at a 0.3 layer height so it goes fast because I really didn't know how this uh, would come out and this is going to be about a six or seven hour print by the time it's all done. Uh, even at 10% infill running it pretty fast and all that. If you want to do a quality uh, it's going to be about nine to ten hours for this roughly 200 by 200 millimeter uh, you know square so plan on quite a bit of time uh, it does take a lot of filament uh, but it is really really very cool I got a couple other cool ideas I'm going to follow up in, in some future videos uh, with this that I think will make this even neater uh, but again I kind of wanted to see you guys to see it printing uh, more directly and talk a little bit about it because it it's building it up in some really fine layers I don't know if you can see back over here uh, there's just it, really thin layers that it's, it's building. So it's really fascinating to kind of watch. And also it's bringing the uh, infill up to meet the, the topology. So it, it really is interesting to watch this print. I know you probably are not going to get an appreciation from this 2D video, if you will, or the time lapse. But when you go to do this yourselves, uh, it's a little bit mesmerizing to watch actually how the curves and everything are formed. I also think it'd be really interesting to watch this being CNC. I think there'd be obviously a lot of spindle movement. So anyways, let's let this finish and then we're gonna f go back to the bench and once I get this off there, and we're gonna take a deeper look at it and see how it turned out. So let's head over to the bench. Okay, welcome back to the bench. So we've printed it out, we've removed it from the Alpha Wise U20, and we have it on the light table. So you can maybe see a little bit of backlighting here. So this is a bit like a lithophane, uh, except a little bit of the uh, infill is showing through. If I was going to make this a lithophane, I might try it a little bit different. Uh, but it came out really, really nice. And so a couple things I want to talk about with this and also share with you guys. Uh, is some of the settings. Now, I printed this out at, at an X3 or 3 times over normal topographical ratio. Uh, it took about 6 hours to print. Uh, I would have probably liked to have gone 5, but I wanted to see how this worked first because 5 was almost double the time. It was nearly 10 hours, and I didn't know how this was going to come out after that much time. So I did it at 3. 3 is still actually pretty cool. Um, and, and that's about three times the, the accentuation of, of height. Now, again, this is a pretty flat area. This is not a mountainous region. Uh, but it is enough to really show some very interesting detail. Uh, for example, you can see here's the mouth of, of Lake Huron coming down. The shape is spot on. You can actually see these marks here down at the bottom. This is the train tunnel that crosses under the, the river into Canada. These came out really good. Now, one of the pieces, I didn't use a base in this to kind of cut down printing time. And because these are so deep, it did pass through a little bit right here. Uh, where if I would have used a small base, it probably would have filled in nicely. But uh, for, for experimental purposes, it works out. Uh, the ship docking yards are right here. The Sarnia Marina is over here. 
Another little harbor marina here really came out nice and you can see the on the Black River This is the Black River which runs into the St. Clair River. You can see the boat slips up here and through here um, The Port Huron City Hall is right here. Uh, it's actually a nice little representation uh, You can actually feel it on the map is kind of cool uh, Over here are two high-rise buildings now This is a little bit where hill shadow comes in because instead of being kind of like square bumps These have basically a shadow because the buildings are like casting a shadow and, and so this is where you could try adjusting it But to be honest with you, I don't really see a big purpose in it because I mean, you know Unless I knew what these were I couldn't tell you that they were a building uh, and the churches actually came out, the church steeples, and that actually came out. Now, again, they're just pointy little protrusions on the um, uh, print. But, you know, again, since I know they're there, they are actually represented correctly. So this, this really was a lot of fun. Now, uh, at 3x uh, in the STL file, and again, I printed this with a 0.4 nozzle, uh, at a 0.3 layer height. I think if I had did a 0.2, maybe the streets, because there's a bunch of street lines in here. And if you look really close, you can actually see them in the print, but it really doesn't stand out unless you know they're there and you look for them. I think, again, at 0.5, you would see these these lines. You'd actually see the streets uh, much better. And I think it the, the print would have a lot more impact at 5. So, again, it really depends upon the topology or you know uh, topology top, you, know, you get the idea of wherever you live uh, of really how you need to set that and again I would probably bring a couple out um, and uh, you know see how they turn out so I would do you know maybe like one at three one at five and and you can't get crazy you know just you know over accentuated uh, you know because it's basically art and the kind of cool thing is you can really start picking out some of the things in the topography that that you really didn't even realize for example when I got looking at these I thought there was actually a problem here until I realized that's where the train tunnel is and so I <laughs> thought that was kind of cool but anyways hopefully you found this cool in this two-part series in the first one i showed you how to you know get an stl and uh for 3d printing and in this one we actually printed it it came out really good uh, again, I've, as mentioned in the first video, I've tried the tiling. I haven't had a lot of success with the tiles, but again, I think if you kind of, uh, you know, measure the area that you're trying to do or, you know, get an area of a smaller size, probably will work. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you get any questions or comments, hit, hit me up down below. Don't forget the bell button over there, swag shop up there, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.